Since my last video, why I'm an atheist and how this relates to veganism, got a lot of engagement on Facebook, I figured I'd clarify a few things. First of all, it is very difficult to share your opinions on the internet because you have to throw in so many caveats and think of who is going to watch your video and how it's going to be perceived. I have people like my boyfriend telling me that I'm too nice and need to be more savage, <laughs> and random people telling me that I am rude and condescending and creating a divide. And then I have people complimenting me and telling me how kind and articulate I sound. Literally, no matter what you say or do, you're going to experience this Goldilocks phenomenon. For example, at work, I come across people who think that Greenpeace is too radical, and then I come across people who think that we're not radical enough. And then, of course, I meet a bunch of people who love us. If you have a channel or share your opinions on the internet in any capacity, you can probably relate. You'll get praise, you'll get criticism, you'll have all these contradictory opinions thrown at you. I definitely expected this, like, you can't please everyone. My intention with this video and my channel in general is not to reach everyone because that is impossible, but to share my perspective and reach a niche audience who can relate on some level because those are the people that you're going to be able to influence. It was the people with whom I share a similar worldview that were most impactful on my journey of becoming who I am today. All you can do is speak from the heart, as cliche as that sounds, and try to embody intellectual honesty, and then you will attract like-minded people who you can possibly have a positive influence on. So now let's get into the criticism that I received from this last video. One person accused me of generalizing and painting all Christians with a broad brush when I said that Christians tend to block out what atheists have to say. But I've experienced this firsthand countless times. And I didn't say all Christians, I said a lot of Christians. My point was just that a Christian is more likely to receive the vegan message in a positive way from another Christian rather than an atheist. This is just human nature. People are more trusting of information that's coming from a source that they deem credible. And this is precisely why I said that I appreciate Christian vegans, and I really mean that, because obviously an outspoken atheist like myself is not the best representative of the vegan movement to other Christians. I respect diversity of thought in the vegan movement, to some degree at least. Obviously, I don't think we should be welcoming of white nationalists into our movement, but that's another topic that I might address in a future video. One fair criticism I received was that I failed to acknowledge other vegans who identify with religions besides Christianity. This was my bad for not using more inclusive language. In sharing my experience growing up in a Christian majority culture, I tend to put the focus on Christianity. But the general point I was making applies to all other religions as well, because it is dogma that I reject and faith as a way of knowing. This leads me to another point, which is that atheists can be dogmatic as well. Not just in other realms, but they can be dogmatic about their atheism. Of course, being dogmatic is not a good thing to be, but the thing about it is you can be dogmatic and still be right, just like you can be arrogant and right. The parallel that I was trying to draw is that the reasons I came to each conclusion, veganism and atheism, were the same. Questioning the status quo and critical thinking. This does not mean that I think that Christianity and veganism are incompatible. I think there are many good reasons to be a vegan as a Christian. And this is true for other religions, as no religion, that I know of at least, mandates eating meat. I brought up every evil thing that I could think of that we'd done to the animals. And I prefaced each point by saying, if God condones the enslavement and the chaining of elephants in a circus, if God condones lighting dogs on fire for burn research, if God condones, and then on and on, and torturing bulls in the rodeo, 
slaughterhouses and hanging animals upside down, then what does the devil do? Veganism is based on compassion, and both religious and non-religious people can extend their compassion to animals. Christianity is, however, incompatible with science because at the end of the day it relies on faith, whereas science relies on evidence. To quote Sam Harris in his article, The Strange Case of Francis Collins, where he elaborates on how science and faith are incompatible, Francis Collins being a famous scientist who is also a devout Christian. This prayer of reconciliation goes by many names and now has many advocates, but it is based on a fallacy. The fact that some scientists do not detect any problem with religious faith merely proves that a juxtaposition of good ideas slash methods and bad ones is possible. Is there a conflict between marriage and infidelity? The two regularly coincide. Insisting that faith and science can be reconciled is like insisting that you can love animals and eat them too. Intelligent Christian scientists exist, and Francis Collins is an example. But this does not mean that the Bible is scientifically valid. Just as many kind-hearted, compassionate people eat meat, and this does not mean eating meat is a compassionate thing to do. In response to my comment about Christianity and science being incompatible, someone quoted Albert Einstein, the more I study science, the more I believe in God. To set the record straight, Albert Einstein was using a very loose definition of the word God. He rejected Christianity, which is why I find it so interesting when Christians quote him as if that helps their case. Another person was peeved that I said that it's strange that Christianity is associated with the Republican Party. The argument they made was that Jesus would not belong to a political party that celebrates and endorses abortion. I never said that Jesus would belong to a specific political party, just that he wouldn't support Republican economic policies. Do you really think that Jesus would support Wall Street bailouts and a border wall to keep out immigrants and defunding social programs that help the poor? To quote the Bible, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. So I think it's fair to say that Jesus was a little bit more of a socialist than a capitalist. I've read many Christian books, including The Language of God by Francis Collins, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, Crazy Love by Who Fucking Cares, <laughs> and The End of Reason, which was a direct response to Letter to a Christian Nation which is kind of a funny story because I read that book after I had my ex-boyfriend who was a Christian at the time, like right before we started dating. I had him read Letter to a Christian Nation and then he like contacted his old youth pastor who sent him this book and he read it and then he gave it to me to read. And so I'm reading this book and I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. Like how does he think that this is a good response? <laughs> and he, I remember him picking me up from school and I get in the car and I was just like, this isn't going anywhere. Like this relationship is not gonna work. <laughs> and I just start like ranting about how terrible this book was. And he was like, yeah, it was stupid. I... So then we ended up dating. But anyways, these ideas do not survive scrutiny. I do not think that Christians are incapable of logic and reason entirely. That would be ridiculous. A lot of Christians demonstrate their capacity for critical thinking in many other areas. But when this particular subject comes up, they do disregard logic and reason and always fall back on faith. Again, just because Christians accept many scientific truths like gravity, does not mean their religious beliefs are scientifically valid. Another key point that I want to make is that spirituality and atheism are not necessarily incompatible, depending on how you define your spirituality, of course. But I would consider myself to be a spiritual atheist because there is nothing irrational about practicing meditation and pondering the vastness of the universe and recognizing the interconnectedness of all beings, and feeling awe in nature. 
Being spiritual in this sense does not require believing in anything without evidence. As for me being divisive, you really need to chill. I am not shunning Christians or Muslims or anyone from the vegan movement. Except for maybe white nationalists and members of ISIS, but we'll get into that later. I'm simply sharing my theory for why so many vegans identify as non-religious. 47%, that is a huge chunk. All I'm doing is opening up a discussion you don't have to agree with me, and if you don't, we can still be friends and fight for animal liberation together. What it comes down to is I am able to separate people from their religious beliefs and see them as intelligent people, just as I'm able to separate people from their culturally ingrained eating habits and see them as good people, given that they demonstrate their compassion in other areas. Expressing my opinion that religion is dumb is not the same thing as saying that religious people are dumb. Just as saying that carnism is evil is not the same as saying that all people who eat meat are evil. You can accuse me of being condescending, but perhaps you just don't like what I have to say because it doesn't align with your deeply held convictions. Even the nicest, most polite atheists are accused of being condescending just as the most polite vegans are accused of being self-righteous. It's an unfortunate reality, but people are offended by the plain truth. Notice how carnists and Christians alike will police your tone, criticize your approach, and hurl accusations of condescension and self-righteousness at you. This is a diversion tactic. They are avoiding addressing the actual substance of the argument. So before you comment on my tone, please answer the age-old question, why won't God heal amputees? It's a good question. Thank you so much for watching and please give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, share it everywhere, and I'll see you next week. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them uh, When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no me now How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan man How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them uh, When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no me now